Welcome back! Today I'm going to show you how I transformed this image to that image in Photoshop. Alright guys, my name is Philip and let's jump right into Photoshop. Now today I want to talk about an image which I took in the south of Ireland maybe about one and a half years ago or something like that. So I was there with my buddy Shane, that's him, right there. And uh, yeah, so we were just driving around randomly and trying to find nice spots to take pictures from, including that one. Now, while I was there, of course, I used a really super wide angle lens, something like 10 millimeters. And if you're photographing straight into the sun, then sometimes what happens is you get lens flares such as that one. So it is essentially just the light which breaks on your lens and then forms this nice calorie, oh well, nice depends on whom you ask, but uh, this nice calorie spot on the image. So that one has to go, of course. We're gonna remove that one. Then there's a street sign on the left-hand side here. We're gonna remove that and the tiny lamp post there as well. Once we have done that, there is not too much left to do. What I want to do is first, in the sky, I wanna make sure that I'll decrease the brightness a little bit and also increase the contrast, right? So because right now it's a little bit flat, so we're gonna bring the blues out a little bit and we're gonna make sure the contrast is increased, especially for that cloudy area because that's really, really cool actually. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure we decrease the brightness in the road, especially up to the point like something like here maybe, uh, just to make sure the focus of the eye follows the white line, which we will make nice and bright, and then goes towards the center of the image. And then once it reaches that, it goes up to the sky and to the clouds and stuff like that. Now we're gonna leave Shane in the image uh, just because why not, you know, yeah, why not? So let's get going, let's do that. And as usual, if you like the video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. And also if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. Awesome. Let's get going, just removing all that, and let's start with the lens flare right here in front of us. Now, lens flares are a common problem, as I mentioned before, and they are, depending on what, like, what object they're on, they're not too difficult to remove. Let me show you what I mean. Lens flares can occur for one of two reasons. Either it is because the color is different, right? So you see, of course, that we have the gray of the street, and then we have all the rainbow colors in the lens flare or because the brightness is different, right? So this, for example, if this would be brighter than the rest, then of course you would also see it. So to check what kind of problem you have there, what kind of lens flare, you might also have a combination of both. Uh, what you can do, you can just, I'm just gonna duplicate my layer, my background layer by hitting Command and J on the keyboard, and I'm gonna hit Command, Shift and U to desaturate that layer. Now, now that I have desaturated the layer, you see that the lens flare is nearly gone which is a sign for us that the biggest problem is actually the color and not the brightness, right? Because if I remove the color, then it's not, not really visible anymore, which is a good sign. So what does that mean for us? Well, for us, that means it's gonna be relatively easy to clean up. So let's do that. The way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna start out with a new layer by hitting Command or Control, Alt, Shift and N on the keyboard. Once I have that, I have my new layer. And what I wanna do is I want to select my Clone Stamp tool by hitting S on the keyboard. I'll make sure I have 100% opacity and I'll just sample an area which is on the other street side right here. So I can just hold Alt on my computer, on the keyboard, not on the computer, on the keyboard, and a sample, so click somewhere in the image, and now I can just start drawing with 100%, meaning I'm copying everything I'm drawing over. Uh, something like that. Okay, perfect. Now that I have that, I can change the blend mode from normal down to color, and once that is done, I can hit the V, the V, not just any, but the V, on my keyboard uh, to move the object around I had just created, right? And you can see if I take it from where it came from and drag it over to the, to the lens flare, you can see that it's gonna take the colors I have on the other side here and puts it over the lens flare, making it kind of disappear right away. Now you only have to be careful that you're not dragging that too far. So if I, for instance, if I go up a little bit and I were to drag that over, I'm also going to remove all the color and the rest of the image, which is not really something I want to do, right? So what I'll do, I'll just drag it up to the point where the grass is um, kind of changing. And once I'm here, I'm going to hit Command and T on my keyboard, which will bring up the transform tool. I'll make sure I'll switch on the little free transform button up here. So the warp mode kind of thing. And I'll just drag that to the appropriate position to make sure I'll cover all the different color spots. Maybe a little bit down here. And let's get that over here as well. Okay, something like that. Just make sure you're not ruining any other colors in your image and then you're good to go. 
Awesome, there we go. Once I'm done, I'm gonna hit enter and deselect that layer. And if I zoom out to the before and after, you can definitely see we solved the biggest part of the of the picture of the problem, which is just a different color, this sort of smudge of color in the center of our road. Now, to finish the lens flare removal, the only thing left for me to do is to adjust the actual brightness. Because remember, words, remember it's either the color or the brightness or a combination of both. So in our case, we still can see a tiny bit due to the brightness being just a little bit increased in that area compared to the surrounding, right? So what we can do for that is just use a simple curve adjustment layer. So I'm just gonna create a simple curve adjustment layer and drag it down to something like that. Then I'm gonna hit Command or Control and I on my keyboard, which will invert that layer and therefore hide everything that is visible, all right? Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna select my brush with B on the keyboard and I'm gonna use an opacity of about 10%, so something not too strong. And then I'm gonna usually would take my time just to go over, it has to be a white brush by the way, otherwise you're being a fool like me. I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, then you go over the sort of brighter areas and make sure they start to blend nicely with the surrounding, okay? That can be a little bit of a try and error kind of thing because you're gonna have to zoom out, zoom in, come back a couple of minutes later. So I'm just gonna be really fast right now because I don't wanna be stuck on that for ages. So I'll just make sure I'll go over it a couple of times that at least it's not jumping out to the viewer anymore, okay? So let's hit X there for a moment and make sure it disappears a little bit here. Okay, I think that's good enough. Let's have a look at that before and after. Yeah, it's nicely, uh, maybe a little, a little bit here. Okay, that's not bad for like 30 seconds effort. There we go. Okay, so if we compare to our original image, we had that really big smudge and now we have barely anything. It could just be a pattern on the road as well if we wanted to. And with a bit more time, you can make it disappear fully, of course. Now, let's get rid of other things such as the street sign on the right hand side, as well as the little tiny post, whatever that is here. So let's zoom in to about 170%. And once more, I will create, a, I will not create one, I will use a new layer by hitting Command or Control, Alt, Shift and N on my keyboard. Now what I wanna use is the Spot Healing Brush Tool. All right, so let's see on the right hand side. And I'm a really lazy person, so the Spot Healing Brush Tool is great, mostly, but sometimes it will just not work. But before I do anything manually, I always check how smart it is and if it just works by going over stuff. So if I do that, that's actually not bad at all. I can completely live with that. Let's just go over here and see what it does. Uh, let's try it once more, just to see. Yeah, it's totally, it's totally fine. It could be way worse. Let's get that in there. I mean, in the end, we are nearly 200% zoomed in. So let's see what it does if I just go down here. One more here. Okay. Of course, you can always theoretically make your um, the, the tool a bit smaller and then just really go properly over the edges and everything. But uh, for me, I'm just very lazy right now. I'm just going to be really fast. There we go. So that's the three sign post thingy, whatever, gone. And let's do the same thing with that tiny thing here. Nope, that did not work. That's a bit too smudgy for my taste. Let's try once more. Okay, that will not work. It's trying to sort of combine things in a way that it just looks smudgy. Let's try the other one. Let's try the patch tool. Why wouldn't we? So I'm just gonna draw a circle around that. Here we are, and then drag it over. Oh yeah, of course, we can't use that on that particular layer. So I'm gonna create quickly a stamp visible, which essentially copies everything that is visible onto a new layer. And now I can do that. Okay, that's a little bit better. So let's just select a couple of other areas and drag them around to something like that maybe. A bit more. Okay, cool, I like that. If we zoom out, awesome. So that's that gone by using simple tools where you don't really have to use clone stamp tools or whatever to get rid of tiny objects in the image. I mean, ultimately we have removed lens flare and two objects in the image which were considerably large I would say at least. So good work, well done up to this point. Now the rest is quite simple. What we wanna do is we want to add some contrast to the sky and some darkness to the road and maybe some color to the greens. So why don't we start with the actual sky? There are several ways to do it. I'm just gonna again once more create a simple curve adjustment layer and drag it down to something like that maybe. Once I have that, I hit Command and I on my keyboard. I get my brush hitting B, I'll make it nice and large, and I'll just go over the areas with a white color and maybe an opacity of 40%, which I want to make a little bit darker. And I was thinking on these areas on the side here, maybe a little bit down here, 
well, maybe not around the sun, just something like that is already not too bad. Once we have that, the next thing I'll do is I'll take a levels adjustment and I'll just drag that to the right hand side up to the point where I think the road, especially the lower part of the road, has a nice brightness. I'm kind of happy with that, so let's hit Command and I on the keyboard, get the brush with an opacity of maybe 20% and just start to paint that in from the sides onwards to something like that maybe. I mean, I don't want to make it too dark, obviously, because it's a f we're shooting against the sun, so it can't be crazy dark, but just a tiny bit to guide the eye or to help the eye move towards the center of that actual image. Just something like that. And we can even go over that area maybe once and over that once. Okay, that's not bad. I kind of like that. Now, let's create a stamp visible by hitting Command or Control, Alt, Shift and E. And once more, this just copies everything that we have done on a separate layer. And with that, we're going to go up to Filter and then camera raw filter. I just want to quickly do some minor adjustments when it comes to the clarity on the right hand side. Now the clarity, especially when you work with clouds, sometimes can do really nice things because it increases the contrast, the, well the clarity of course. So for that I'm just going to drag that to the right hand side here and maybe leave it more something like this. And of course it's doing a little bit too much to the rest of the image so I'm going to click on the layer mask symbol which is in the lower right hand corner right here, hit Command and I on my keyboard and zoom in and I'll just bring it in with a white brush to the areas where I think it's making a good difference to the image. So something like here, a bit here. Let's see if we zoom out and we go over these blue areas. I kind of like that darker bluish color there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that. That's not bad. Okay, so that's that sky. Let's make that a bit darker here and there. Awesome. Let's increase the greens and then we are nearly there already. So there are different ways of increasing colors in Photoshop. So a simple way for me is just to use the hue saturation layer, right? Because what you can do instead of just working in the master and changing hue and these kind of things, let's put that back to zero. Awesome. Let's click into the master and go down to greens. Now, I only want to affect the greens, so I have to know if I'm actually affecting them if I were to make any changes here, right? Maybe there's a bit too much yellow to be actually green in them. So what I can do, I'll just drag up the hue and the saturation to its maximum, and everything that goes crazy in the image is what I'm affecting right now with changes I make here. Makes sense. I can adjust the range of colors I'm affecting by using that little slider on the lower right here. So I want to move that slider to the right until I have most of the greens here, right? And once I have that, I can also use these fine adjustments here to sort of feather that out a little bit. So I'm going to maybe do something like, maybe something like that. It's not too bad. Cool. Let's bring the sliders back to the center more or less and just increase the saturation first of all and then change the hue to a nice flashy green. I do not know if there is such a thing as flashy green, but you know what I mean. Awesome, maybe something like that. Perfect. And if we switch it on and off, we can see I only affected the greens in the image and nothing else, right? If that would still be an issue, I could still create a layer mask and make sure I only paint the effect in wherever I need it. But for me, and especially for the purposes of this video, that's totally cool. I'm totally digging this. I'm happy with that. Awesome. Looking at the image to, uh, well, looking at the image and seeing what we have done so far, there's just one more thing I would like to do, which is placing a bit more attention light-wise on the center of the image. Because so far it's still relatively flat and we might be able to pump it up just a bit more. For that, I'll create a curve adjustment layer and I'll drag it up. Maybe to something like that. Once I have that, I'm going to hit Command and I on the keyboard to hide that effect. And I'm going to take a brush and make it really large. So something like that maybe. This brush has to be white and with an opacity of 40%, I'm going to start to bring out that increased brightness in the center of the image. Just around here. Okay, to something like that maybe. We can always increase the brightness further if we feel like, but just using uh, going back to our curve and increasing it more. But I think something like that is actually not bad at all. Then I'm going to duplicate that curve adjustment layer by hitting Command and J. And what I want to do, I have now, of course, a curve which makes the center bright, but I also need a curve which makes the surrounding dark, right? So I can just go into that curve adjustment layer and drag it down instead. Maybe do something like that. And now if I click on the layer mask and I hit Command and I, 
uh, I have sort of fitting layer masks, right? So this one would fit into this one, meaning that I have a bright center, but a very dark surrounding. Of course, that is a little bit extreme. So what I can do, I can just decrease the opacity of the darkening one, for example, to something like that. And I could also blur the one for the brightening. So what I can do, I can select it. I go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and blur it a little bit, not that much. Maybe something like... Something like that maybe is not bad. Oh, yeah, I, th I think that's good. Let's stick with that. Awesome. So now we have given our image a bit more center, right? So a bit more sort of a channel view because it's getting brighter towards the center of the image. And we have a bit more darkness here. We have beautiful greens. We have a nice contrast in the sky. And above all, we have removed all sorts of crap from the image. And that is all I had to do to process that image in Photoshop. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching and for joining in into one of the other images from the south of Ireland from like one and a half years ago. There are many more to come. I have like a database of many, many gigabyte. So I'm looking forward to go through the rest of them eventually. As usual, if you liked the video, do not forget to hit the thumbs up button. And also, if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. It's going to help me out a lot. Other than that, I shall see you the next time. You go out there and take some pictures yourself. Happy processing and see you then. Bye.